Hi, this is Samina Sheikh here on Zoom channel, and with me, I have Sonali Kulkarni. Join me as I welcome her on my show. Hi, Samina. Lovely to have you, Sonali. And as I was anyway praising your features and lovely eyes, I must say that <laughs> thank you. With. Thank you so much. Over the years, you have been a part of Marathi cinema, but now you're entering out. You're going to Malayalam cinema. So, how did this shift happen for you? I would say the shift happened pretty organically from. Uh, uh people especially my director having watched my marathi film so it happened because of the marathi films or um, because of the most popular song that i've had in marathi apsarali mm. so uh i would say even after 10 years 14 years down the line the song still has an impact mm. on uh, of course on a lot of uh, on the audience as well but a lot of indian filmmakers who have watched the film in the past um uh, have kind of noted down some things and uh, some are probably going back and watching it mm. so i feel whatever um interesting on earnest work that you do mm. never goes waste it comes back and gives you something in the future present it stays forever so i would like to really take this moment and feel gratitude towards uh, apsarali and natram and mm. yeah that's how this film happened and it's also been said that now it's not like you know south versus marathi versus bollywood it's all about in you know, a pan indian film yes. do you also agree with that absolutely i think uh, since pandemic uh, all of us kind of realized that uh, thanks to the ott screen we all have an access uh, where we can watch not just all the films across the, the country but films shows content basically generated across the globe yeah. so so in since pandemic uh, you know on a big on our small screens or on your ipads or your smart tvs you now can compare a film made in maharashtra with a film uh, which is made in korea mm -hmm. or an american film you hold this the same standards with a malayalam film or any film that is made in any region in whichever language mm -hmm. so uh, yes it has become Uh, a small world it is a world which is very compact which stays in your screen and hence your quality of content also needs to match up with the kind of content that is being made globally uh, coming back to films that are being being made in india we have uh, various regional films doing um, their kind of work for the last so many years like marathi films are known for the content that we make uh the small scale but real cinema that we make that kind of connects to people um and a lot of filmmakers take kind of notice of what marathi filmmakers are doing uh since the shwas uh, days which went for the oscars uh then we have malayalam cinema which also pretty similar space in terms of the budgets in terms of the audience in terms of the content um so you know all these boundaries between bengali gujarati marathi punjabi they've all kind of diminished in the last few years and which also gives artists like us a, a bigger or larger platform where we are not restricted to doing oh they do only marathi films or oh they do only south indian films or for that matter any particular regional films so yes i think pan india term uh since the the advent uh, of it during covid has become an absolute uh eye opener for indian filmmakers and artists and audiences to have a, a great opportunity for everyone and i have to ask you also sonali and i have seen the kind of work you have done you know and it's quite different you know marathi cinema for that matter you know speaks volumes and even movies made in marathi are converted into you know bollywood films yes. you know and be it being such a lively example for everyone that people loved it Do you also see some movies con being converted from Bollywood to Marathi, and do you feel that this mixture of this conversion is quite good? Ah, uh, you know, I feel since pandemic now that we have access to subtitles, uh, then dubbing in various languages, we don't have to make remakes. You know, I always felt that some stories are meant to be told in those specific regional languages for them to have that authentic essence. you know if you watch a korean film you want to watch it in their language how it sounds what they do uh, you know for a film like past lives which is in um, korean american film even if the 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 characters go and live in america 
the fact that they still have that Korea in their heart and it's so difficult to get out, get that root out of your system. Unless and until you watch it in that particular local language, you will not feel the soul. Yeah. So I feel the reason or the need to, to remake uh, films now has uh, no longer makes sense. We don't need uh, remakes. Rather, we need more local stories. The more local you go, the more regional you go, I think it has a larger connect universally. Universally, So let's not, I think, focus on making remakes, whether it's from Marathi to Bollywood or from Bollywood. Because Wade uh, was an example where you said that people watched it. But Wade wasn't remade in any language. They did dub in Hindi also for it to have larger audience. But it still remains a Marathi film. And I have to ask you this also, like as you said, like you know, now it's a compact industry, but at the same time, the quality of the content matters a lot in terms yes. of how the storytelling is. Yes. Now that OTT is into picture, do you also feel that's giving a lot of actors opportunity to showcase their talents, which otherwise would get like not unnoticed yes. with movies you know, and selective yes. movies only, you know, getting that you know that slot to feature or get promoted for that matter. Absolutely. I think in the recent times, uh, where we always, when I started out, uh, we used to feel that, you know, to get into mainstream Hindi or Bollywood films, it's it's far distant. You know, you feel that you will probably not be able to make it because there's so much uh, going around. You know, you need to be somebody, somebody. You should be able to have that access. I don't want to use those regular terms, but yes, it felt unapproachable, inaccessible, unachievable to be a part of mainstream cinema. So a lot of good artists um, had to wait. And now with the advent of OTT and uh, the advent of small indie films, we have every little artist getting their due, which is absolutely amazing times to be in Indian entertainment industry. So. Um, you know, actors who were stuck into doing television for so many years, but they wanted to probably get out and do something better, interesting, not very monotonous. They are getting onto web shows and they are they're finding their own path. Um, also, that uh, gives an interesting uh, fact to the actors that there is no lifespan, a limited lifespan to actors anymore. Like, you know, 10 years, 15 years, and then you don't have any interesting roles to play. So you retire and play mother or, you know, elder uh, characters, older characters on yeah. the screen. But now you can play whatever you are. It does not matter what age you are. There are stories, there are characters, and there are mediums which are allowing you as an artist to go and explore, which is amazing. And don't you also feel, you know, as we talk about the age factor, now that is diminishing a lot, yes. like especially yes. at one point of time, act just as especially like you know being judged like after 25 your career is like gone or if you're married if you're yes. blessed with kids and all yes. but now it's not the case like even a Ravina Tandon when I see her on OTT or say Madhuri Dikshit or a Shilpa, or, Shetty. Or a Shilpa Shetty you know it feels like it feels quite good to see them and you know it's more of what they're presenting in yeah. terms of their and they're, they're playing their age they don't have to be 25 year yes. old running around the trees anymore so that is I think we are maturing we are maturing as audience we are maturing as makers we are maturing as artists and it is amazing to see that we are accepting what we are, what age we are, how we look, how we, uh, what we are basically. And that is incredibly um, amazing. And I think it was long due. We all needed that space to be ourselves, express ourselves uh, the way we can organically. Especially women are not, you know, fixed in certain things. They are given more exposure yes. as earlier it used to not be the case. You know, yes. they would be just like, okay, this is what we, how do we want? Yes. We just want them to be a doll, you know, around our movies. Yes. But that's not what is happening. It's not patriarchal anymore. Yes. Fortunately, Fortunately, to some extent. To some extent, at least. Of yes. course, there are some battles, but still like there is some gender equality which is coming into picture. Yes, I think uh, in all sense, we have a positive approach now and we uh, we have a voice we have found our voice i think we're just making it stronger it's only a matter of time that uh, you know few years down the line we will not be discussing oh how it is to fight gender equality yeah. yes we we are on that path and i think um, with women even the men in today's generation are also um, accepting it pretty gracefully yeah. so it's not about women fighting their battles anymore it's about men joining them uh, empowering them yeah and uh, giving them an equal respect and due 
in terms of uh, not just monetarily but on screen as well and as we talk about men earlier men would always portray themselves like you know as a strong part of the society but now they are also ex you know ex exploring yeah, they're being the vulnerable, vulnerable it's, side it's fine to be vulnerable which is very good you yes, know which is not something yes. we would otherwise see you yes. know and they would get judged also that men has to be strong they cannot cry on screen but now we don't see that we see characters where they talk about you know being sensitive yes. like ranveer singh you know he said a dialogue in rock your running yes. he came coming that you know i'm way too sensitive please yes. be very you know selective while talking to me and all like that yes. you know so do you feel that is also changing where men are also becoming expressive yes earlier they would be like no we want to be in a certain manner only yes. Yes, I think uh, that's very important because at the end of the day, human emotions are universal. They are not restricted to gender, a particular gender. Yes, women may have uh, a certain way to react because we have so many hormonal things going inside, which is obviously never going to be the same for a man. Yeah. But yes, men do feel insecure. They can feel vulnerable. They can feel weak. They may need strong women to hold them up, and usually they do. It's just that they were not coming out. Uh, and speaking about it so openly they were not speaking about it so confidently um which is so so wonderful to see that you know it's all right we are all we're all imperfect and it's okay it's okay to be imperfect nobody is perfect i think the idea of perfection is dying uh, whether it's for a man or a woman um and we are all becoming more accepting of ourselves first yes. and then of course others coming back to your bollywood debut uh, you had chosen grand mastery for your bollywood i think debut. they chose me so they it's always you. yeah basically the other way around chose you. but but if given a chance would you prefer in today's time work in a movie like grand mastery would you prefer exploring your sense of humor or would you prefer doing something like a rajiv given an example oh yeah. i mean i mean it's a very hypothetical situation to be in um and rather privileged situation to be in where you can choose what you want to do um but i i i don't regret any of the decisions that i've taken in my career because they've always been the best decisions for those particular times and i think i've been honest uh to myself mm -hmm. in that moment so uh yes uh, in given circumstance in given choices that was the best option available for me so i wouldn't go back and change but yes times have changed today and um you know i may have uh um, better op opportunities now like this film that i did so um in given circumstances whatever possible uh option you can choose why not but no regrets you learn from every little character you play you learn from the films that you do at the end of the day uh that film went and made 100 crores yeah. which nobody was expecting at that time yes. nobody even the producers were not very sure so when a film is a success it's a success period whether it's a good or bad film and coming back to your malayalam debut uh, you're also working with mohan lal sir and he's extremely famous you yes. know for the work he's done his recent uh, film was quite into news also you yes. know on that matter and people has been talking about his work plus when we see malayalam films there is a lot of content yes. you know there is a lot of stories you know even love stories which they have been making people are vouching for it and they are preferring to watch it in malayalam yes. language and not in hindi yes how was it you know associating with someone like him and working with fabulous in fact like you said uh, you know you want to probably watch the film in the original language yes. so i had watched drishyam and drishyam 2 2 in the original language with subtitles mm -hmm. so uh, he, you know having watched him in the recent yes he's done amazing work in the last 40 years of his illustrious career he's won so many national awards he's padma shri he's also uh, you know um, lefnin and uh, he's a trained dancer he's trained in martial arts he's a director also now he's a producer mm. so he's like a master of everything mm. uh, having said that yes as an actor also he's very very um i would say he's in acting school mm. just to observe him i wouldn't say that you know we used to sit and talk about oh how the craft is done oh you should do this that's how it's done he never actually did that but trust me to be on the set alongside him just watch him speak his lines do his uh, shots you get to learn so much from him and the most important tip that he gave without giving was uh, to sometimes do less and not more and that can be more impactful than doing uh, a lot so you know when you do reactions when you're probably just you know speaking or when you have like cameras on you you don't really have to do a lot 
sometime as an actor you thinking oh let me do this probably get that gesture maybe just do this this reaction this way but if you do really less that leaves a larger impact and he's such a subtle actor to learn from uh, also a great human being a legendary um, he's got such a huge fan club but he's so down to earth you know he would just sit down and talk to all the newcomers and you know of, of, of course it's my debut in malayalam but there were also actors who were just working in films for the first time mm-hmm. so he would just sit down with us you know show his uh, show reel kind of a thing listen i did this dance form oh you dance oh see i do this dancing yeah. and this was my last action sequence so we would just sit around him and you know show him what we have done and he would be interested uh, to see what you have done mm-hmm. so it's a nice a uh, child like uh, energy on set to be with him mm-hmm. and of course he's he's a fabulous co-actor so patient he would do his uh, shots re- retakes so many times especially when when you're in action sequence they can be multiple retakes mm-hmm. uh, because so many things are involved but i never saw him losing his patience and i would be like are i complain so much when there are like three takes look at him he's doing like five six eight retakes and he's and not because of his fault mm-hmm. even if his co-star is kind of you know messing up the mark or something like that he would still patiently do a nine retake shot and he would be absolutely calm about it mm-hmm. i think i would love to learn something like that from him to be calm and patient on set You're also famous for your Lavni dance, but yes. now we are going to see you doing some fusion dance. Tell yes. me more about it. Uh, so the film that uh, we are talking about, Malay Kote Valiban, mm-hmm. is about uh, it's it's a travel film where uh, all the main characters are traveling from place to place, showcasing their talent. Mm-hmm. Uh, the character that uh, Lal Sir is doing, Valiban, is a is a wrestler. Mm-hmm. So he's going on combating with people and you know asking for challenge. While he's on his journey, I. uh who uh, is the character is called rangarani who's a dancer who's a theater uh, dancer it's like you know we have notanki and tamasha from indian folk theater so she's a tamasha notanki actor and uh, she goes on performing everywhere so our uh, our director wanted not any particular dance form but kind of a fusion which may depict a, a certain uh, various kinds of indian dance forms indian folk dance forms because the film is set in a unknown period it's a fantasy drama but it it should still have some some element of say marathi uh, some element of say rajasthani because we were shooting in rajasthan some element of obviously uh, malayalam uh, classical dance form so we have a nice fusion which is like a lavni because we have uh, the typical toda that you have in the beginning of lavni uh you have the nath you have a similar kind of a sari but it's not a navari okay. it's like a dhoti and then the design the blouse design is quite rajasthani mm-hmm. uh, also the song is malayalam yeah. so there's a nice fusion of uh, indian folk forms coming together and you could when you watch it you'll be like ah oh, it's looking like lavni but it's not entirely lavni yeah. so that was the whole thought uh, our anyway our indian culture is so rich and so vibrant and so colorful yeah. we wanted to bring in as many colors as possible mm-hmm. to make rangarani yeah. because the name depicts how colorful and vibrant the character is i have to also ask you uh, sonali and you know as we talk about dance also and about your work marathi cinema has been very close to your heart absolutely and the kind of work you have done has always like you know people have appreciated did you ever thought of wearing the director hat or you know turning into a producer <laughs> ever with any of your marathi movies oh uh, i don't think i can be a director because i'm uh, you need a different version yeah. for a film um, to be a director but yes there are stories that i want to tell uh, which i don't see myself Uh, as an actor being a part of it mm-hmm. but i still want to tell some stories so in that case i think yes i may produce in future i'm already working on a project uh which is a story which cannot involve me as an actor as because of the age group and other factors but i feel uh, i do have that knack of executing stuff mm-hmm. bringing a good team together and you know helming that project mm-hmm. uh, in, as as a producer so in near future yes i will try and do that 
and as we go back to your movie the malayalam movie and it talks about the travel diaries and you know the traveling of things where is that one place you had your own time and you know you traveled and you know you had it, your own experience altogether i think every location has uh, uh, had a different vibe to it mm -hmm. uh, so we were shooting in jaisalmer which was very cold and then it got suddenly very hot because we were shooting there till march mm -hmm. then we were shooting in pokhran fort for one month okay. Uh, and we went to Tamil Nadu near the Jinji Fort. That was also very hot. We went. I think we shot there in May June. Um, I think more than uh, enjoying a certain location, I felt very claustrophobic in Pokhran Fort. Oh, okay. Yeah, that was a very difficult time. I think uh, as an actor to be there because we were stuck in that fort for almost one month. We were shooting a fight sequence where. Most of the actors, apart from Mohanlal sir and uh, the fighters that he was fighting mm. with, we were not doing anything. We were just spectators. So to get ready every day for a month and just stand as a spectator and watch a fight was uh, was kind of claustrophobic. And um, there were times when we had to take some, you know, unplanned breaks. And that I remember one particular day it was holy, and uh, you know I had. Uh, none of my friends around, no family around. I was stuck in a world where nobody spoke my language. Mm -hmm. Everyone spoke Mallu, which I don't understand even till date. It's very difficult to understand Malayalam language. They all spoke Malayalam. Uh, nobody spoke Marathi. Nobody hardly knew any any Hindi. I had only a few, three or four people who could speak in English with me or interact with me. Mm. So imagine you're in a world which is alien to you, nobody speaks your language, it's a holiday, it's a holy day, people are having fun and yeah. you're missing home, you're missing your friends, I'm watching my friends playing holy in you know, some farm and I was like really depressed, I, I must say that. So sometimes it can get lonely, it can get claustrophobic, yeah. um, but you have to pull yourself together for that one particular goal which you all are sorting for. You know, when, when you see the visuals on screen, you realize it's all worth it. But sometimes uh, shooting out, outdoor for uncertain times mm. can get uh, lonely. And lastly, as we talk about your Marathi film, you're also all set with Tara Rani. And yes. tell me about it. Yes. The, I saw the look and I, it looks yes. quite good. It's like, it's like, it reminds me of Jhansi Ki Rani, to be honest. So I, I want to know from you about it. Picking it up from there, mm. we all know about Jhansi Ki Rani who fought one war in 1857. Mm. But uh, you know we have a queen, unsung hero from uh, Maratha Empire, uh, Maharani Tara Rani, who fought seven years against Aurangzeb okay. after there were no king left in the in Maratha kingdom. Mm -hmm. So after Chhatrapati Shivaji Maharaj, Chhatrapati Sambhaji Maharaj, Chhatrapati Rajaram Maharaj, we had no king. Okay. So Aurangzeb thought this is it. You know his dream to capture the entire Deccan would be accomplished. Uh, but then this woman stood against him oh. for seven years wow. and made sure that he did not achieve his dream. So sometimes, you know, we have to appreciate people for not because they have won something, but because they have not let the opponent win. Yes. That's also a very big victory. So we need to celebrate her. We need to get uh, inspired from her story. And we all need to know that there was somebody like her who fought the invincible Aurangzeb for seven years without her own army mm. and the story is about that the story is about uh, what happened to Maratha Empire after the kings okay that's yes. very interesting and that's something we are looking forward to yes but lovely chatting with you Sunali and knowing more about your projects and I'm looking forward to both thank you Malayalam film and beat Tara Rani I think I have gotten more excited with Tara Rani to be honest thank you I'm looking forward to see more of your work and thank you so much for your lovely time hi this is Sonali Gulkarni you're watching me exclusively on zoom